Hey travel friends, today we're going to be talking about the things that you need to know if you're thinking of visiting Cinque Terre, Italy. All right, so that's what she wanted to title it, but I think that these are the worst things about Cinque Terre. But uh, let's get going. What's the first thing? So the first thing we would flag is mobility. If you are going to go to Cinque Terre, you need to be mobile. It is all stairs. Uphills, downhills. Cinque Terre is five towns along the coast and they're all built on hills and mountains. So if you're staying anywhere in those towns, you're just guaranteed to have to walk up from the train tracks. Yeah. The distance that you have to go is pretty short. Mm -hmm. Like all the towns are really small, uh, but the elevation changes is, I would say is significant. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty dramatic. <laughs> Second thing you need to be aware of is the weather. Yeah, uh, Cinque Terre has got to be one of the most weather dependent mm -hmm. places we've been. It's, mm -hmm. I think it's almost like ridiculously absurd how weather dependent it is. These towns are like right on the cliff during the off season, winter and stuff when there's like a lot of storms, it shuts down everything. The shops shut down, right? Trains stop, Buses. the hikes, the trails, they are closed. And we'll show you some images as to why this happens because we were there during some inclement weather and the floods are nothing to like yeah. bat an eye at. Mudslides, like yep. it can all happen. Just have some backup plans, but yeah. we still enjoyed it. Yeah, it was. It was okay. <laughs> I enjoyed it a lot. Especially if you're thinking about going to Cinque Terre during the shoulder season or the off season. Uh, just know that, you know, be prepared that there could be a storm that could just totally shut the city down and leave you sort of just stranded in your, you know, accommodation spot. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is there is a relative lack of good food options. Actually, if you look up good places to eat in Cinco Terra, and um, there'll be sort of just like five restaurants or so that's mentioned in every single town. Mm -hmm. And that's where like everyone goes. And there we go. You know, that's that's the problem is that it's just packs up and fills up. Yeah, so make reservations because a lot of these great places have really good views, but right. again, limited balcony space. Right, right. So we were able to get in just because we don't mind eating really early or really late, and yeah. that worked in our favor. But if you want to be right. there during sunset or like prime right. viewing, which surprisingly we, we also got in around then, yeah. um, just plan ahead. So the last thing we'll point out is the hiking trails. The reason why you go to Cinque Terre are for these four hiking trails so that you can hike between each of the towns. Right. My first trip there, all four were open. That was a long time ago. Now two of them are pretty much or have been permanently closed right. for right. years. It's probably extremely rare that all four trails are open these days, mm -hmm. right? Because during bad weather, it's closed because it's just the weather's bad and it's dangerous to go on these trails. Mm -hmm. And then during good weather, they're fixing the damage <laughs> that was done, right? During the times of bad yeah. weathers and bad storms. So, you know, just know that like a lot of the the trails are probably gonna, going to be closed uh, when people visit. And again, it's just like planning ahead, but also being extremely, extremely flexible. Yeah. Cinco Terra is like, you really need like a plan B and a plan C. And if you do go with a very flexible and open mindset, as well as itinerary, you're likely to have a, a pretty good time. Yeah, and just be prepared for potential disappointments for your original plan to not happen. But yeah, go with the flow. All right. Okay, okay I think that's it for this one. All right, until right. next time. Bye. Bye.